Hi everyone, and welcome to another video from Fortune Book Holtz of Not Fortune School. As promised today, I'm going to focus on the extra cards in Chiro Marchetti's new Kipper deck, the Fan de Siècle. And I wanted to take a moment per request and compare them to some of the extra cards that are in his limited edition Lenormand. I also wanted to make references to these cards in terms of history, right? Because all of these games, both the Lenormand and the Kipper, are derived ultimately from other earlier games, both English, French, and German. So I just wanted to take a moment and talk about the extra cards, talk about how much they add to uh, the game, to the deck, uh, how really visionary Chiro has been to add them. Uh, I'll note what problems they solve, which is why you know they're so helpful and useful. And I'll also be showing various pictures uh, in the Hoffman Weissekarten catalog to show how the cards come from earlier decks, and there are similar cards in earlier, de in earlier decks, which likely, and in fact, some cases I know, inspired Chiro Marchetti to include them in his decks. So we'll also talk about that. We'll also talk about another game that's not in the Varsity Carton book, which I think is very well known. That's a book in the U. It's a, a game in the UK, and it's called Harlequin Takes All. And we'll go ahead and talk about that. It's from you know the 1790s, 1794, 1796. So we can go ahead and, and we'll just go ahead and talk about that. So thank you so much. And let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to just talk for a moment about the Lenormand extra cards, right? So, you know, those of you who have Chiro's deck, remember his limited edition Lenormand deck, it comes in a little case like this. And here he was so kind as to autograph this for me and send me a little message because he's just that fantastic. You, Everybody knows here that I'm a big Chiro fan. So I'm always happy to, you know, show how considerate and thoughtful a Chiro is when taking so much time to make each deck a personal and unique experience. And and he's always been really excellent at that. And that's one of the things that adds so much value to his deck anyway. So let's go ahead and talk about these four extra cards, right? So here's the first one for those of you who may not have seen them in the flesh, so to speak, right? Um, this is the dice card. This is the time card. You see it's one of uh, Chiro's wonderful steampunk kind of clocky things. You know, he loves these clock toys. This is the bridge card. Beautiful card, right? Very evocative, sort of almost Lord of the Ringsy, right? Fantastic. Deceit card, love this. Two face mask here, very reminiscent of you know, many um, depictions in art history of the god Janus, you know, the two-faced god, right? Anyway, so there we go. And let's go ahead and compare these then to the extra cards. You can see here or there, the cards are side by side. You can see that um, the new Kipper cards are just a tad smaller than the limited edition uh, Lenormand cards, but they are the same size as the commercial version so you can use them easily with your commercial version if that's something that you want to do. And they're really just a fraction, really just a fraction smaller, I don't know, maybe a third of an inch, a quarter of an inch, possibly less, right, than the limited edition Lenormand cards. So you can also use them together too, right, with very little difference. And then here is Poverty. Beautiful deck, beautiful card. Toil and labor. I hope you can see that. And then I'll get. In, I'll show you this one again. The community card. All right. So let's go ahead and talk for a moment about the Lenormand cards. Right. The, these extra cards of the Lenormand deck. Well, many of these actually have a very firm place in history of these kinds of games. Right. And they come from a 1775. Um, deck as well as from the Harlequin Takes All deck. So let's go ahead and talk for a moment about the uh, 1775 deck because I do have it in Hoffman's Worse Carton catalog and I can kind of just like pop it up to you. It's This is an English deck actually and sorry the light here is kind of grim. As you can see it's number three here and you can see images of the cards. Also, Hoffman includes the names of the cards 
and their meanings, which is very useful. What's really great about this catalog above all is he gives all of the meanings and verses for all of the historical cards. So if you have a desire to read the cards, including the ones that correspond to scat or the German deck, the German playing cards, you can go ahead and do that. And you can use meanings from any time, you know, from the, from the late 18th century to the early 19th century to the mid 19th century, you know, he's got them all. They're all here. So if this is really a great way to vary up your scat and other German playing card readings. Anyway, so I just wanted to talk about this for a moment. So um, let's go ahead and talk about the dice. This is, comes from the Harlequin uh, Takes All game, and I've posted that before on my Facebook page and in my Facebook feed, and I'll probably um, make a reference to that in the link that this video will have on YouTube. So uh, that's where that comes from. I believe this card was suggested for addition uh, by Tally Godwin to Chiro when he was making this deck. Another card that comes uh, from Harlequin Takes All is the bridge. Beautiful deck, Meeting of the Ways. So, you know, Harlequin Takes All is a dice game, right? Where some squares are good and you collect coins and some squares are bad and you have to pay coins. Some squares are drinking squares where you actually have to, you know, take a swig. And, you know, if you go past the marker, you have to go all the way around again. So it's kind of like a snakes and ladders kind of game. You know, it's a fun kind of parlor game. And I actually recommend that you like kind of take it out and play it and you can use your ring or any marker and a dice and just you know go to town and play these wonderful games from the 18th century they're kind of mindless and they're kind of fun and you can drink a lot and exchange a lot of pennies so yay that's all good right uh, then let's go ahead and talk about this card time now this is a card that definitely comes from the conversation cards and here I want to just um, show you the actual page entry this is actually in the collection of the German National Plan Card Museum. So I don't know if you can if you can see that right here, but here's the card, the time entry right there. Maybe it's backwards for you, but there it is. You can see that this is actually a, a well-known card that comes from the history of this. And there's also the deception card. And uh, hold on just a second. Let me, I've just dropped, of course, my um, <laughs> my my page marker. So kind of forgive me for that. Welcome to my table. This is flattery or deceit right here. I hope you can see that. I hope the light's not too bright. Excellent flattery or deceit. All right, so that's right there. You can also see that in this deck, turning the page again, is in fact a poverty card. Right, and this is of course what Chero has depicted here. So this is all good. And then uh, the toilet and labor card, this is also, uh, there are actually two decks that this comes from. This uh, has a, a very similar um, industry card that's also here for like, you know, hard work and labor and no fun and uh, not a party. I'll show you this one here. Again, forgive all my, there we go. I hope that comes into focus for you right there. Excellent. And then, um, of course, we also want, so that's the toil and labor card there for you. So uh, let's go ahead then and talk about the community card. There are several forms of the community or company card that exist throughout these games. Uh, right, there's a wonderful game. Let me show this to you. This is actually exhibit number seven. I've been showing you mostly exhibits number three and four. But now I'm going to go ahead and take you forward to number six in the Warsay Carton exhibit. And this is, uh, again, a, uh, from the late 18th century. Here you can see the sort of an overall picture and form of the cards. And here you can see one is called Community or Company Gesellschaft. And the meaning given for this is, in fact, company, society, community. So um, 
companionship. So that's just really uh, fantastic in all of these cards, as you can see, really are firmly rooted in the history of these kinds of games. And they're really, really wonderful additions. So when people say, you know, why, what's, what is it with these extra cards? Where do they come from? Why are they useful? I just wanted to show that they have a very firm history uh, in the development of these kinds of games and that Chiro really, by including them, shows that he has a deep understanding of the evolution of these games and where they come from. So I'm very impressed by that and that's one of the things that of course has always been important to me is understanding the scholarly history and the actual research behind these games and what they say about society, what they say about what people were thinking about, what people were doing, and to feel a real connection to those people because we have many of the same concerns today, right? You know, um, if you've ever seen the movie Room with a View, right, the famous Merchant Ivory film about people who go to Florence, English people who go on the grand tour to Florence, right, um, people are admonished there uh, because they always carry their Bedekers, their travel guides. And there's a lot of time spent in that movie uh, making fun of these people who like, you know, stand in front of the beautiful statue, the incredible church, the amazing chapel, and instead of actually looking at it and having an artistic experience or an emotional reaction of their own, they stare at their, you know, guidebooks, their Bedekers, and are like, oh, okay, check, you know, I've seen this, this is great, oh, and then they move on, right? Oh, but of course, we're no different, right? Except now we look at everything with our iPhones, Right, and we likewise miss life because we're focused on our iPhones. So just because we have all this difference in lifestyle and technology, a much different social structure, much different social roles, there's still many things that connect us, you know, to the people of this time who play these kinds of games. And I think that those are the things that are really fascinating, you know, to learn about. And that's what I like to, you know, kind of emphasize, right? So that's just a you know an example. So when we talk about, of course, time, right, from the Lenormand deck. I always use this whenever there was any doubts about the time, right? Some The Lenormand cards have a lot of time built in, but sometimes um, you, you really are unsure about the house timing or you get conflicting timings if you're using a large grand tableau. And if that happens, you know, if you're ever in a situation of doubt, the time card in its house right, offers you a very interesting meaning. The problem is, is that, of course, time in card time and in life doesn't always pass the way that you think it does, right? I mean, so, you know, we think two weeks, four weeks, it's gonna happen next quarter, it's gonna happen next season, but, you know, things happen in their own time and what time means in terms of the cards is often a relationship to the question or a relationship to other events depicted in the cards. And it may not be the time that you think, right? Or it may not be the time that you want, which is always, you know, the way cards are, right? Especially Lenormand and Kipper cards. The German cards are very straight to the point. No BS, no sugar coat. You know, I'm not gonna be fluffy bunny nice to you. I'm just gonna slam it on the table. And, and we also see this in questions of time, too. So I really have always found this card useful for difficult and complex questions. And again, it's another reason that I like to mix both the Kipper and the Lenormand because you get the benefits of, you know, this kind of card. Now, Deception, I always thought was a very useful card in his Lenormand. Uh, particularly for people who, you know, read in the French style and who tend, I believe Rana George does this, use the fox as self-employment, right? So also if you read a lot of animal communication or if you read for people's pets, people tend to use the fox card for cats. And you don't really want to also layer the meaning on that, you know, deceitful or wrong or anything negative if it's dealing with self-employment or if it's dealing with your cat, right? That's not you know, really awesome. And so this gives you an ability to unburden the card from too many meanings so it doesn't become overdetermined, right? And then you can use this card, which I always liked a lot. Of course, the bridge, it's wonderful. You know, one of the things that people who uh, sometimes read Tarot will say about the Lenormand and even the Kipper is that you it's, you know, you pair the cards in combinations and you have certain game mechanics that come from the history of these games being parlor dice games, but you don't, you know, have the same melding and 
and mixture of cards and effect of the cards and blending of the cards the way you do in tarot. So if you ever need, you know, uh, how, you, how I get from one place to another, how I blend a state, you know, from one of the elaborate storylines that you can construct in the Grand Tableau to another elaborate storyline in the Grand Tableau, the bridge card is really good because it helps you do that. It can often serve as a, con as a connecting card. In, in, and if you've done a lot of Grand Tableaus and you've seen how you know, the elaborate storylines can flow. You can get, you know, the storyline for the lady and a storyline for the gentleman and, you know, and a storyline for all of the other people that we have in the Kipper cards, the rich maiden, the millionaire, all those people, right? But the question is, is how do you often connect them all together, right? When I want to tell a continuing narrative, and this is a really great card to help you bridge those storylines in an easy way, right? And in a way that makes sense also to sitters, so they don't often just look at you and say, hmm, how did you get that, right? So this is really beautiful. Now, in this same way, right, as we use the extra cards in Lenormand, which I do, you know, also use them when I mix Kipper and Lenormand for readings, as you may have seen in the uh, companion document to Chiro's Kipper deck, right, where I give a mixed reading in a grand tableau of both Kipper and Lenormand, because it was very useful and pertinent to the question there. Poverty um, is really great. If you consult what I wrote about this card, you know, about what is lacking, right, your sense of scarcity, um, you know, also really actual physical monetary hardship and, you know, lack of money and a decline of income, right, uh, you can also mean emotional poverty, right. Um, this is just really a, a great card. It allows you to express the different levels of social stratification in the Kipper deck. And I think that this was uh, a very important piece of Chiro's vision was to represent all aspects of Victorian society in his deck and to give a, a broader range of society than uh, you saw in the idyllic Biedermeier styled a traditional deck and he's really succeeded when this. this is a beautiful card of course when you think about this card right we immediately all you know leap to Mary Poppins those of us who are English speakers and we think of the happy chimney sweeps you know and their chalk drawings on the sidewalk and it, it all seems fantastic but we really have to remember that in the German context in Switzerland particularly um, these were child slaves, right? So orphan children or unwanted children would literally be sold or sometimes even kidnapped and they'd be forced into the dangerous job of the chimney sweep, right? So in the old days when you have a chimney or many chimneys in a large house, right, you burned unclean wood or, you know, sometimes even charcoal and the creosote, you know, the wood sap that's burnt builds up on the inside of the, these narrow chimneys which often have twists and turns, right? They're not always straight and they would literally catch fire so you would like have a flaming chimney that's like flaming in one of the it's sort of nooks and crannies and you need to put this out but an adult can't fit past this nook and cranny so you take one of these poor orphaned indentured or enslaved children and you actually send them up with a rags and a bucket of water to put this fire out right and many times tragically they're asphyxiated right so so when we see the sort of ideal of you know the chimney sweep and we're immediately come to these associations that come to us, you know, from Mary Poppins and, and other, you know, charming Victorian British films. We don't have a, a, a sense of reality about what the people who were actually, you know, uh, chimney sweeps underwent, right? So that's something that Kipper really highlights and this is something that Chira wanted to bring out as an aspect of Victorian society. And I think this card, you know, does it really well because he's not like, you know, happy and singing and dancing. He's not like a Dick Van Dyke. He's actually, you know, trudging through with a dirty face on the rooftop. He's tired, he's cold, he's hungry, and you know, he his life is constantly at risk. So this is certainly how poverty feels. People certainly reach these kinds of emotional planes. They certainly suffer from the lack of income. And I think that this is a really beautiful, uh, blunt, again, no sugar coating, this is the way it is, situation that sometimes happens to people either literally in their lives or emotionally in their thinking. And I think it's just really great that he included it. Let's talk about toil and labor. 
Okay, toilet and labor. Well, you know, I think lots of us, when we see cards like this, we immediately understand the realities of the, you know, British textile factory, right? Which was an extremely cruel uh, environment where many women and, and uh, young children, people with small hands, young girls, were forced to go in and adjust the looms. And of course, these are mechanical looms, right? They shuffle back and forth, these jackered mechanical looms. And you can lose fingers, you can lose hands. It's very poorly lit, right? Uh, it was common for these children to work 12 hours a day, six or seven days a week for almost no pay, right? They were often robbed of their pay. So, you know, this is uh, a really uh, profound insight, again, that uh, Chiro has. We have different kinds of labor and work cards in both Lenormand and in the Kipper deck. You know, we have um, the self-employed man, we have, you know, the rich man, the millionaire who's a financier, we have the aristocrats, you know, we have the middle class people who are the haupt person and the haupt persona, you know, the, the gentleman and the lady, we have the rich girl, you know, we have all of these, or as I like to call her, the great beauty, we have all of these different, you know, kind of social classes and how do we represent the working poor really, right? So this is a beautiful, um, reminder of what is happening and it's very appropriate I think also uh, to the original Biedermeyer era as well as to the Victorian era that Chiro is representing here because Ludwig von as I said in my last video did in fact begin to industrialize Bavaria and he did in fact open some of the first factories which were quite cruel so um, that's why you know Karl Marx did his whole thing but we won't get into that so that's really um, a beautiful 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 edition and I like it a lot it's been it's been very useful to me certainly when people come to me and talk about you know struggles and such to really think about this card and think about how much this card uh, you know will be adding and let's also talk again about the community card right this has a great variety of meanings I certainly have so many associations with this Victorian time period and that comes of course from the BBC from you know, uh, novels of the time period from watching many famous British movies. Of course, I always think of My Fair Lady when I when I immediately see this card, right? Here's our, our flower girl of Covent Garden, right? Here we have the servants who are drinking, right? Here we have the gardener and the kind of, you know, man of all trades here who kind of, you know, is the street sweeper. He'll do anything, right? And then we have the pub errand boy who is, thank God that he's a step above our, our poor friend who has been indentured as a chimney sweep, right? But there's this kind of idea of the stoic working class, part of the British stiff upper lip, the people who get together, support each other, get it done and make it happen no matter what. You often see this um, concept in British movies and British films. And again, this is a great way to represent um, more kinds of groups, right? Because we have so many sort of individual people in the Kipper card uh, system and we have a couple of cards that represent certain kinds of meetings right but nowhere do we really have the same kind of card that means family or community support the people who are always there for you that which you know surrounds you socially and it really calls out more to the social aspect of the Victorian time and of the Biedermeyer time of course you know because of the situation I, I hate to keep going back to this, you know, Ludwig I was very politically repressive. He had hundreds of political prisoners, just hundreds of them. And um, he kept them all in his military prison. And that's what you, which in Munich, and that, that's what you see in the traditional, you know, uh, original Kipper deck is this sort of nondescript yellow building by the, one of the gate towers in the old, old part of Munich during the old days. But it was a terrifying place the military prison because that's where Ludwig put his political prisoners and you tended not to, you didn't come out, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, Chiro uh, represents this in his version of the Kipper prison card, which I think is really insightful. Um, it's different than the traditional card instead of being, you know, kind of the um, nondescript yellow building, which would strike terror into someone who was familiar with time. He shows, you know, the ragged, uh, debtor's kind of prison where your only friend is a skinny rat and I'm not sure whether he's your friend or whether he's gonna take your finger off when he gets too hungry so these are just the kinds of wonderful additions that Ichiro uh, has made um, and I really uh, I really find them very beneficial and I like them a lot 
So I will be reading me these cards from now on in my own practice. Uh, tomorrow and the next day I am reading here in Pittsburgh at the wonderful boutique Journeys of Life. Such a very safe and supportive space and I do have some openings so if you see this video you're in the Pittsburgh area and you would like to come experience card readings with Chiro's brand new deck you can certainly do that. And you can just call them, uh, you can look them up online or I'll put their you know, link or information to their pages in the description for this video. So that's kind of, you know, just kind of what I wanted to say here. And I wanted to, um, again, show you some of the other cards that are, that have bearing on kind of how the deck came out here. Um, some of the cards for the areas of Germany that were Protestant have very similar cards and very similar games to the Kipper, but they have Protestant themes, and those can be seen in the Varsity Carton catalog as well, for those of you who are interested. But you can also see a lot of uh, card development of different types, and what I'm trying to get here to are these cards right here. These are really beautiful. These are the only ones that he has in color due, the, due, to, due to the development, of course, the German invention, the German perfection of chromolithography, which is why they're so famous for their paying cards because they had such a head start on printing and modern printing methods for the time, right? So right here, I'm sorry, let me just slip through again. As I said, I have naturally lost all of my placeholders, so forgive me for that. But you can see here, uh, Professor Hoffman, when he compiled this book, he took all of the decks that are related to the Kipper and to the Lenormand, and he kind of put them all together to show how different patterns of the cards are used at different times. And so you can see in each of the exhibits, he notes which versions of the cards and which themes appear and reappear of how these cards and games are all mixed together to create each other, right? And this is exactly what Chiro has recognized, the historical truth of this, has recognized when adding his new cards in his deck. So, um, again, I'm sorry this video went a little longer than I, than I wanted it to, but I just wanted to talk about the extra cards. I know a lot of people have questions about them and how they're used and if they're useful. So I hope that uh, this answered some of your questions. Once again, I'm very grateful to everyone for the extremely positive response and positive comments I've received, not only on the companion PDF document made by myself and my delicious wonderful, lovely, fantastic, gorgeous, intelligent, so talented uh, co-authors, but also, of course, in my own videos and my own work. So thank you so much, and I'll be making another video on Sunday in which I'll actually start to do card readings for you with Chiro's deck. Until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.